Hello everyone, welcome back to Air Dash Academy. After taking a look at movement in Street Fighter 2, let's look at the various forms of movement in Air Dashers. Again we emphasize, don't compare them based on what they look like, like air and ground. Compare them based on the risks and reward. To redefine our risk-reward scale, let's jump straight to the most extreme option and one of the defining features of the subgenre, air dashing. So let's break down the mechanic and see what's going on. Your character advances very quickly forward or backward in mid-air and does so for a set distance. While moving forward, there's an initial window where you can't do anything. You can neither attack nor block. Afterwards, there's a second window where you can attack but still can't block, which means you'll lose to dedicated anti-air moves. And then, much, much later, when gravity starts affecting your character again, you're finally able to block. So wait a minute. Traverse the screen quickly? Stuck in a specific movement for a set period of time? Can't block, but can attack? Lose to anti-airs? This is the equivalent of forward jumping in Street Fighter 2. This is your risky get in quickly option. While it's indeed much faster than a Street Fighter forward jump, the anti-airs that stop it are also faster to come out, so it balances out. That's because while in Street Fighter the dedicated anti-airs are usually invincible specials, which require you to input a joystick motion, in Air Dashers the anti-airs are normals with upper body invincibility or a really great upward hitting area. Don't forget that normals can be executed much faster than specials since they don't require a joystick motion. Traditional dragon punches still exist, but are usually used as reversals rather than anti-airs. Backwards air dashing is like Street Fighter backwards jumping. If you have enough space to start it, even though you can't block, it's a good way to retreat quickly and gain some space. Air dashing backwards also allows you to use rising aerial attacks as preemptive anti-airs without getting into a closer position and taking risks. It's important to note a critical limitation with air dashes. They have minimum height restrictions they can be performed at, and this limitation is more severe in the rising part of a jump compared to the landing part. Because an air dash from the rising part, as the name Instant Air Dash suggests, can be done instantly, while air dashes from the landing part of the jump require the initial setup, and so they are rewarded with a lower minimum height restriction. We'll come back to the implications of this later. Jumping serves as a middle ground between safe ground movement and air dashing, but leaning more towards the risk-reward of ground movement. With air dashing taking the role of Street Fighter's jumping, actual jumping in air dashers becomes very similar to ground movement, but allowing you to utilize different angles and areas on the screen. What makes it almost as safe as ground movement is the ability to block while in the air and access to more movement options, which prevents you from having to commit to a predetermined course. Guilty Gear's Universal 6P anti-airs offer upper body invincibility from the very first frame, but many of them are pretty slow to hit. This means that they serve as a perfect counter to stop air dash offense, which keeps the attacker in the air for a long time, allowing the slow anti-air to hit but using those anti-airs to beat jumping attacks is harder. Since the opponent lands right after attacking, rather than staying in the air via the air dash's momentum, you need to use the slow anti-air much sooner in order to hit the opponent in time, which requires bigger commitment and sets up countermeasures for the jumper. In short, air dashing beats horizontal offense but loses to waiting and late anti-airs. Normal jumping beats late anti-airs but loses to early, more committed anti-airs. But early anti-airs, in turn, are vulnerable to tools which are available to the jumper. One option is to use the variety of possible angles, super jumps, double jumps, and dashing jumps to mask the angle of approach, and make it harder for the opponent to position in the correct spot to anti-air. Remember that many anti-airs work well at a very specific range of angles between 0 and 90 degrees, and they tend to lose to cross-ups. Another option is to fake an attempt. It's important to remember that the jumper still has access to either an air dash or a double jump. A backwards air dash is a low risk, low reward option used to cover yourself after you realized you committed to a bad jump, or just to test the waters of the opponent's anti-airing habits. The more aggressive bait is to double jump. It leaves you in a good position to get right back in and attack after the anti-air whiffs. The risk is that if the double jump is predicted, you are stuck landing at a slow, obvious course without any options to change your position, which allows the defender to easily reposition and set up offense. Depending on the character, you can substitute a double jump with a move that stalls your momentum. Of course, when things go bad as you land from a jump, you can always resort to blocking. While you won't take damage, it's still a disadvantageous situation. You must spend precious super meter to air block grounded attacks with faultless defense, and you're giving your opponent momentum for free, since after the anti-air normal is blocked, the opponent is free to continue attacking as you are forced to land while stuck in block stun. 
Not only that, but landing from a jump and knowing that your option of pressing buttons is going to lose to an anti-air leaves you open to unique mix-ups. Against a blocking foe landing from a jump, the opponent can mix anti-airing with jumping and throwing, and even dash under and attack from the other side, switching the direction that you have to block. Hopefully this explains why jumping is safe, but not as safe as approaching from the ground, as shown in the graph. Let's examine ground movement for a brief moment. The walk speed in the game is pretty slow, the forward run starts slower and accelerates gradually, and the back step takes 15 frames to finish on average. The reason for the speed limitations of ground mobility is not only to prevent tick throws and pressure from becoming too effective, but also to keep jump-ins effective enough. In a situation where you jumped over a whiffed move and got into an angle where the opponent's anti-airs cannot be used, they won't have enough time to reposition or get out of the way. However, they may still have time to jump an air throw, which is a useful option in certain matchups and situations. We mentioned that blocking in the air is usually a disadvantageous situation, but there are times when you want to purposely jump and block in the air rather than on the ground. This is called chicken blocking. The first advantage it gives is that it allows you to block while moving forward at the same time. In Guilty Gear specifically, this costs a lot of super meter to utilize, but characters like Potemkin can still resort to this option to bypass zoning. The second advantage is that while blocking in the air, you don't need to worry about high-low mix-ups, and that some of the moves that are good against grounded opponents are not as good against airborne ones, and vice versa. So when you have the chance to take off the ground, it's a good defensive option to mix in with your other evasive maneuvers, depending on the scenario. One last thing to note is that air dashing has two limitations that prevent its use as an instant overhead. First of all, there's the aforementioned minimum height limitation when air dashing from the rising part of the jump, which does not exist in the descending part. Secondly, air dashing mid-screen tends to fly across a crouching opponent, so it's really hard to get combos from it. But if the crouching opponent is in the corner, an air dash from the descending part of a jump will not cross up and grants a combo, which means if you can condition a cornered opponent to avoid pushing buttons against your jump, either by forcing them to block a projectile, or by threatening with a normal jump in they won't be able to anti-air, you open the door to a mix-up between landing and doing a low and late air dashing attacks as a high, because both these options will hit in a similar, delayed timing. So air dashing also doubles as a generic but rewarding corner mix-up option for many characters, without harming the mid-screen neutral phase. That's it for today's episode. Subscribe and tune in for the next episode where we'll cover other important concepts.